Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by Daniel Chamberman, the real estate developer for Grupo Echo. Daniel, how are you doing? Abby, pleasure to be here. Many thanks for the, for the invite. Uh, very excited to be here with you. Awesome. When we spoke with you for our Invest Greater Fort Lauderdale report, you mentioned how construction had started on phase three for Atlantic Village, the development that you're currently working on. That will include a wellness center, 65,000 square foot office space, and a parking garage. With the current emphasis on work from home and social distancing, why do you think the timing is still right to go ahead with these developments? And how has the current state of the pandemic altered the de design of the project, if any? Um, yeah, so that's a well, very good question. Uh, first of all, let's not forget uh, of the 12 plus restaurants uh, that we have in the complex, uh, as well as the soccer fields, which is something that it's truly, you know, different. It's not the typical thing that you tend to see on a mixed use development like, uh, like ours. Um, but the project, um, the project was designed prior COVID. Uh, and we designed it in a way um, pretty much to enhance the, the experience of the final customer. Uh, what we're doing, it's a lifestyle mixed use development. Uh, so, you know, at the design stage, we tend to see really how the final customer is gonna, it's gonna feel uh, once they're inside the project. So, you know, we designed it based or taking that into account. We did it with a lot of outdoor space, uh, you know, a lot of artistic features, which you know, coincidentally now with COVID is something that, you know, that the market is looking for and the, that the customer wants, you know, obviously uh, we've been forced, uh, you know, to, to be in this situation that, that we cannot operate in sight anymore. Uh, so pretty much all these outdoor venues, if we can call it like that, uh, have taken, a, you know, a big, uh, you know, a big importance and a big impact into, into these sites, into this type of development. Timing wise, um, you know, I, I, I think that it actually, it kind of worked perfect for us. And it's, it, it's a little strange, you know, to, to say that because obviously last year, had, you know, was a, was a struggle for, you know, for a lot of people and for, for many companies. Uh, but, you know, here in the office, we try to see the glass half full instead of the glass half empty. You know, we're firm believers of, you know, personally, at least myself, of positive energy. You know, if, if, if you, you know, if you think positive, if you do things uh, in a way that you're thinking, okay, this, this makes sense, this is going to happen, then things tend to go, you know, better. Um, why do I say that timing actually worked perfect for us? Because we're, you know, we're located in Highlandale Beach, uh, which is right north of Aventura, uh, about 20 minutes south of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and it's a suburban market. Um, and the reality is that last year, suburban markets weren't as appealing as they are today. Uh, these days, the suburban market, uh, they, you know, it started to be a trend even where we see, uh, you know, big names and big corporations that last year they weren't, they weren't really looking into those spaces. They rather to be you know, in more urban markets in downtown, in Brickell, you know, uh, and these days, um, now we're seeing how, you know, big national players are, are expanding or even relocating uh, from urban market to suburban market, um, you know, and, and, and uh, specifically here in Broward, uh, which you were asking about the Broward County, you know, really the real estate industry in Broward has been booming. Um, it has grown significantly in, in you know in the in the past year and and I really see that the trend is going to continue you know because we are seeing how these big corporations uh, are you know migrating from from you know the northeast coast or the or the west coast down here to Florida and and the reality is that these not only the corporation, but the heads of the corporation and the executives, what they're looking for is, you know, more space. 
uh, and, and to be more comfortable and to pay less, uh, you know, not only in rent or, you know, or in real estate itself, but, you know, in taxes as well, uh, which is something that here in Florida, it, you know, it plays a big, uh, a big portion, if you ask me, of one of the reasons that why we're seeing this migration from, you know, from uh, New York, Chicago, California, et cetera. Yeah, we've been watching the same uh, the pattern of, of people from the Northeast uh, personally are relocating or companies are relocating. And we've been watching that for the past number of years, but it has only sped up during the pandemic. Um, yet the commercial real estate sector has seen a, a hit here in South Florida. What are your projections for 2021 as we continue to watch that migration come down here? Um, interest in suburban areas increase, um, and uh, the where does where does the commercial real estate sector lie in 2021? I think that we have a very promising year, in my opinion. Uh, you know, starting with the fact that you know South Florida it's a, it's one of the places that you know never closed. You know. A, because yes, obviously we had the lockdown in the first, in the initial stage of the pandemic, but then right after, uh, you know, everything was open with regulations and 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 of course, uh, you know, taking all the necessary precautions. Uh, but at the end of the day, we cannot compare our situations to you know states as New York or you know even California. Uh, I was talking to. To a good friend of mine in San Francisco, and you know, and he was shocked that, you know, that here you're able to, you know, go and dine at a restaurant, uh, or you know, or if you want to go out on on, on drinks uh, with friends, you have the possibility to do it. Uh, and I think that that's one of the things that, you know, that that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, what we were looking, why we saw this growth especially, you know, through end of last year. And now it's going to happen, in my opinion, through, uh, through 2021. Um, you know, because of that reason as well, Miami, you know, that uh, it was usually an international destination. And we get a lot of foreign, you know, a lot of foreign visitors and a lot of tourism uh, from foreign countries. Uh, it changed, you know, last year in, in that regard because we never got the international tourism. Sure. But we did got the local tourism. Uh, we saw how, you know, restaurants, uh, they were packed. Uh, and, and, you know, when stores were, you know, crowded with people again. Um, and, and, Yes, it's a different market because it's not the South American customer. It's not the you know Russian European customer that tends to come here to the you know to to Miami. But it's more of a you know of a local uh, of a local national uh, tourist. Um, sure. So that's how you know that's how we're seeing, it. and that's how, that's one of the reasons why I think that you know this year. Uh, it's a it's gonna be a good year we're seeing how many companies as i mentioned before they're relocating here many restaurant owners from from new york from you know from chicago uh, they're starting to open and to have operations here in in south florida so you know i think that that's uh, i think we're gonna have a much better year than we had last year and you know, you you just mentioned about shopping and how we've seen a lot of local tours. There's definitely trends that are changing when it comes to retail uh, and how Florida is versus the rest of uh, the United States. Um, and in your uh, conversation with our annual report in Best Greater Fort Lauderdale, you mentioned that it was important that new tenants you attract create very good synergy with the tenants that you already have on board. This keeping the sentiment in mind um, and looking at those challenges last year and how you know we've watched uh, retail space evolve. What types of businesses and organizations will you be looking at as solid tenants moving forward? So, uh, yeah, like you said, for us uh, to have good synergy, that the center has a good synergy, you know, within the co-tenants and between themselves, uh, it's critical. Uh, for us, you know, we do a big analysis, not only of, of, of 
the area, but also of the trends that are happening within the market uh, when we purchase and when we acquire a, a piece of land. Uh, you know, at the time, and I'm going back to 2015, where when we did our analysis, um, you know, what we saw last year uh, with everything that's been going on has been very reassuring for us because the reality is that we we didn't have to change any paths. We didn't have to start looking for other types of tenants because, you know, and, and again, I'm going back to 2015 when we purchased the, the lots and we did the and we did the analysis. You know, we you know, we pretty much we noticed that we were in a high income, high demographics area, but the area it lacks in restaurants and entertainment pretty much. So we focused. Uh, our, our main concept of the center uh, based on that to create a lifestyle plus a culinary destination with, you know, mostly f and and restaurants and food related venues on ground floor and complement those restaurants with entertainment tenants and service retail tenants on the second floor, uh, which it's, you know, it, again, it's been very reassuring for us because that's where the trend and where the market has been heading to. Uh, you know, now we see how more mixed use development add more service component into their mix and not so much of the conventional retail, uh, mainly because of how the e-commerce has has been affecting you know the the conventional retailers uh, so so yeah you know again thank god we never had to you know change paths but uh, to answer your question we're looking for you know restaurants we're looking for entertainment tenants you know we're pretty much looking to create a one-stop shop for you know, for the families and for the community that lives around, you know, a place that you can not only can go to eat something or to maybe go on a date with your significant other, but you can also take your kids to their soccer uh, lesson or to their soccer practice, or or take you know your babies to a swimming academy, or you know go and do your hair or your nails and you know work out. So uh, that's a you know that's a little bit of what we're trying to create here that's what we're that's what we're looking for and that's really what we're seeing as far of you know trends and you know and and, and what type of tenants are are working in these type of developments fabulous well thank you again that was daniel chamberman the real estate developer for grupo echo my name is abby malone and you've been watching invest insights daniel thank you again abby thank you so much pleasure being here with you Hey everyone, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest business trends from our knowledgeable experts. Be sure to check out the description below for more information on the segment you just watched. Thanks for tuning in.